I will not make age an issue of this campaign. I am not going to exploit for political purposes my opponent's youth and inexperience. <laughs> That was a moment during the 1984 presidential debates when Ronald Reagan was asked if, at 73, he was too old to be president. As you can see, Reagan's answer even got a laugh from his Democratic opponent, Walter Mondale. Joining us now, author and NBC News presidential historian Michael Beschloss. Michael, good to see you this morning. So let's Same just start. Job. Let's just start with the the history here. How much do debates tend to matter? Well, there are three that changed history. Uh, 1960, John Kennedy showed that he was the equal of the two-term Vice President Richard Nixon, and the momentum began to shift to Kennedy. 1976, Gerald Ford made a, made a terrible mistake saying that there was no Soviet domination of Eastern Europe. He meant something else, but people said, well, you know, Ford has been claiming he's the statesman superior of this one-term Georgia governor, Jimmy Carter, made it possible for Carter to be elected. Number three, 1980, Reagan and Jimmy Carter debated 10 days before the election, only one debate, big undecided, a lot of them were women. Uh, the undecided voters were telling pollsters, we're worried that Reagan is going to be a warmonger. Reagan came in and gave a studied performance, looking charming, saying that he had a grandson. Last thing on earth he wanted to do was take the nation to war. People were relatively convinced. A huge amount of undecided voters moved to Reagan, gave him a landslide. So, Michael, this debate's going to look very different than most, right? First of all, it's, it's the Commission on Presidential Debates has been sidelined. There's not right. going to be uh, an audience. It'll just be the two men right. and the moderators. It's Thank also God. it's it's also going to be much earlier than normal, and it's between two men who each served four years in the White House. Give us your thoughts as to what a unique moment this will be. Oh. Yes, uh, two people that we know very well. And the question is whether this is going to be like the 19, 2020 debate uh, atmosphere between uh, Trump and uh, Joe Biden, which was acrimonious and loud. I think the format probably prohibits that. It's very much like Nixon and Kennedy 1960 in a studio. You know, no audience, no ability to grandstand. And I think the big surprise is going to be, as I think you were saying earlier in the hour, is there going to be rally Trump coming in bombastic? Or is it going to be more like almost his uh, depositions on video in which he actually sounds like a rather quiet, rational business person? Stay tuned. So the Trump team is already sort of working the refs here last few days, really accusing the CNN anchors who are going to be moderating the debate of, of bias. Uh, we have seen Trump suggest that Joe Biden should be drug tested. Uh, you know, give us your sense as to what are some things you're going to be looking for yesterday as, as, or on Thursday as the audience watches this, that, you know, where there may not be a lot of live fact checking and they're going to have to sift through probably an avalanche of lies. This is going to be really hard because Donald Trump is known for saying things that are not true at rallies and on TV, even in presidential addresses when he was president. So you're giving him an hour and a half of TV time, at least maximum, including the candidates and the moderators, that he can use to get out falsehoods, especially because he's going to have the last word. It's going to be a challenge for the moderators and Joe Biden not to let him get away and use that time, exploit it to pump falsehoods into the public bloodstream. And, and lastly and briefly, Michael, um, who, who do you think has more riding on Thursday night, Trump or Biden? I think they both do because this is almost a tied election within the margin of error. You, in the past, the distant past, you had one candidate coming in with a big margin, wanting to hold on to his lead. Nothing like that. So each of these candidates have a big incentive to try to use this first debate to move the needle. All eyes will be on Atlanta Thursday night. We, of course, will mm -hmm. have complete coverage here on MSNBC. Author and NBC News presidential historian Michael Beschloss, thank you so much. We'll speak to you again soon. Hey there, MSNBC fans. I'm Luke Russert, and be sure to join me, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Lawrence O'Donnell, Steve Kornacki, Joy Reid, and many more September 7th in Brooklyn 
MSNBC Live Democracy 2024. Click on the link for ticket information. We will see you there.